Hello everybody and welcome back to some more NASCAR Heat 5 Custom Championship Series without the playoffs where uh, today we're finally making an adjustment that I think we probably needed to make you know maybe 10 races ago at this point but I'm going to go into the championship settings and at least just for this race and I can adjust this in the future depending on how things go uh, I'm going to change the custom difficulty from 105 down to 100 I'm hoping that doesn't make it too ridiculously easy or anything for me I'm just hoping that it makes it where we're more competitive because quite frankly, for the last, you know, 10 or so odd races, uh, outside of things like restrictor plate tra uh, tracks, we don't really have much of an opportunity to really race for the win or even race for like a top five. And I don't think that's all that entertaining. I also don't think it's all that fun to really drive and always be in 20th place. So we're going to go ahead and change this for now. If it turns out to be too easy, I can always adjust this. Fortunately, we can fine tune it. You know, we can go up one or two points depending on how we feel. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get started going to Chicagoland Speedway. So, despite lowering the difficulty five points, we have qualified 26th, which is basically as bad as we would normally qualify. Hopefully, that's just a sign of, you know, the fact that qualifying in this game is kind of, you know, not ever going to really work out in your favor too much. But uh, hopefully, we have some better race speed. But uh, we're going to go ahead and go through the top of the qualifying results just to see. Kyle Busch, I didn't even have to check. Honestly, I just had some kind of feeling it was either going to be him or Denny. Denny's a bit farther down. But uh, yeah, hopefully we can actually go up there and compete with them. Because if not, Kyle and Denny are really just kind of running away at this point, kind of like Denny and Kevin are in the real world. All right, coming to the green flag. I'm pretty sure this is a 35 a lap race, but I feel like I've been lied to before from the uh, like main menu. We're going to see once we get across the line. Of course. So yeah, it is 35 laps, 31 laps of fuel. So we are going to have to pit. We're not exactly the fastest off the line here. I feel like that's, you know, exactly the same as all the other races. Really, I don't think we're going to notice much of a difference until maybe uh, longer into the run where the tire wear still comes into effect. I did consider getting rid of the, uh, you know, the advantage we have from tire wear. But if we're still going to be struggling even on 100 difficulty, I really don't think that's, you know, going to help anything. But uh, we're going to go ahead and see. Not off to the best start here. Hopefully we can get, uh, get up there and start moving along. Also, and this is a completely irrelevant point, I don't know why, this just randomly came up in my mind again. I was uh, cooking lunch earlier, right? And uh, I just looked at the ground and saw this giant, like, three or three and a half inch long bug uh, just, like, scattering along the floor, probably at, like, I don't know, a couple miles an hour. This thing was quick, I, I'm telling you, it was frightening. Uh, and so, obviously, you know, you see something like that, and uh, first inclination is, okay, just, you know, smack it with something. So I smacked it, uh, it died. And uh, little did I know, apparently it was a house centipede, and those things are actually, you know, apparently pretty useful. Uh, they keep, like, silverfish and earwigs and stuff out of your house, which, unfortunately, my apartment has a few of right now. I'm getting it sprayed here in the near future, as I'm kind of putting myself almost three wet here. Not exactly the best thing to do. So maybe I wanted to leave it alive, but, uh, I mean, maybe, you know, it should have done a better job of, uh, like, making me unaware of its existence. Because, uh, I mean, hey, first like inclination in my mind if i see something that big in my apartment and it's not cute and furry and it's not helping pay rent it needs to leave uh so i mean hey you know for all i know maybe i had a stash of like a bunch of money to help me pay rent or something uh, or maybe it was secretly a dog i kind of hope it wasn't but it no longer exists so rest in peace i'm kind of hoping i don't see more of them because apparently they go wherever you know silverfish and other things are Hopefully those things die too, because, uh, I don't know. My apartment hasn't really had pest issues, but in the last month or so, there's kind of been a whole bunch of them. I feel like it's because uh, we've been getting a bunch of rain, you know, like hurricanes and whatnot, uh, and also just because it's summer. So nothing wants to be outside when it's that hot, including insects. Even even insects have feelings. Good thing I don't care about them, but uh, hey, you know, that's, that's just me. All right, so we've moved up almost to the top 20 here. We're not exactly... You know, outperforming what I think we would typically do just yet, but we are still closer to the this big pack ahead of us, which would get us to, uh, towards the top 15. So I'm already liking the way this looks. Let me look at the tire wear. I haven't actually paid attention to that. 88%. I definitely could have loosened the car up just a tad bit more because it is still slightly tight. Uh, I say that even though this is generally about as loose as I set up my car in most of the tracks, I feel like I need to always just go one notch farther to the right than I always do. Um, just because I always feel like I'm being a bit too conservative and I leave the car a bit too tight, which leaves a bit of speed on the table. Um, and clearly that's not going to help us when we're, you know, not always, you know, up there running at the front. So we're going to go ahead and 
get alongside Eric Almirola. See you later. And then we're going to go say hi to Austin Dillon, who uh, I don't think he's necessarily having the greatest season in this championship season. I mean, to be honest, I don't really know how many drivers are having that great of a season outside of, you know, the few cars at the top, mainly Denny Hamlin, Kyle Busch having an amazing season. Uh, Ryan Blaney's been doing pretty well. Martin Truex Jr. also. Austin Dillon, I don't think exactly he's lighting the world on fire as we're going to get a big run coming off that corner. We have, is this Daniel Suarez up here? In 15th place. All right, pretty impressive. Also, going back to that like centipede story, now whenever I feel like there's some kind of brush of like wind or whatever on my arm or leg or something, I'm always paranoid that it's going to be like this giant four inch bug. So uh, yeah, maybe at some point in this video, you'll see me chuck my controller up in the air. Probably not going to happen. Because, uh, I mean, worst case scenario, I kind of freak out slightly. But I have no idea what I'm talking about. Hopefully it just doesn't happen. And uh, it probably wouldn't make the cut even if it did. Because I have no idea how like how I would react. Okay, at this point, I am definitely noticing the, uh, you know, the difficulty drop. Oh gosh, we are going into that corner way too shallow. We have to get way off the gas there. Because uh, we're almost into the top 10 already. And we are not even that far through this green flag run. We can still go, you know a lot longer than this we could be battling for a top five i feel like i don't know if it's a car that's going to be battling for the win but it's a it's definitely an improvement i will say that if we get up there and we win like very easily then i might you know bring up the difficulty by like a one every race after that until eventually you know it's not all that easy for us i also i kind of find it interesting that truex is cold while still running inside the top 10 i mean hey in real life he had like He's had like seven or whatever races in a row where he's always been third or second. So, I mean, hey, if you're putting up stats like that, ninth place is definitely an off day for you. I'm just happy to be here, quite honestly, up here in a whatever position I'm in. Ninth. I keep looking up to the top left. I forget that the position's always in the top right. Also because my uh, the microphone arm that I have right here mounted next to my uh, monitor is always blocking it. So I basically never look at that side of the map. Also, okay, well perfect timing well maybe not actually we definitely would have benefited from a longer green flag run but we are up in the top 10 we are going to go ahead and pit i feel like we could take advantage of this our left side tires should definitely be fine for the rest of the race i would think this could be risky but i'm just going to take right side tires and we're going to have enough fuel at this point to just make it we're not going to have to do a green flag pit stop fortunately because uh that would definitely not go in our favor and we shouldn't have to repair anything so this should hopefully get us so, oh gosh, we're starting in first place. Forgive me, field, but I have forgotten what it's like to be up here. Also, it's only fitting that our best friend Brad, right alongside us. How's it going? Please don't kill me on this restart. I would like to have some kind of dignity remaining after this. Also, blazing fast, 2 minute and 18 second lap. That's uh, about what you would expect out of the back markers nowadays. And somebody is out of the race, so I have a feeling somebody just blew an engine. Maybe they got into somebody because the game should have to have two cars involved in an incident for it to actually, you know, put out a caution. But I wouldn't be surprised considering all the multi-car wrecks that we've been a part of or witnessed where they haven't done anything. Okay, we're not immediately running away from them. Also, I probably should have gotten down to the bottom faster there. That's my bad. I totally could have done it. I just don't want to risk wrecking myself, although now there is the new option to turn off DNFs. Uh, if you have watched the latest patch video that I made, I don't want to use it yet. I don't want to risk using that until I've actually DNF'd. And even then, I'm not going to necessarily use it unless I feel like it was a bogus DNF in some way. Okay, that was a terrible entry to the corner. I was just kind of hugging the wall for far too long. The outside line's probably not the way to go here. But I see, I like this. We're actually racing competitively towards the front. But we're also not just strictly faster than them. We might be on the longer run. That's the thing I would be concerned about. Uh, and if that is the case, then after this race, I would just increase the difficulty back to, say, like a 101. Um, and then just progressively keep increasing it. Because at this point, we're far enough back from, like, Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin in the points that even if it takes us three or four races that go relatively easy for us to uh, fine-tune where we want to be, we're still not going to, you know, have passed them in the points unless they had an absolutely disastrous, like, you know, few uh, races. All right. Joey kept getting on our rear there, so I'm going to try and not be in front of him because I would prefer our uh, nose pointing forward, which I don't think would happen for too much longer if we kept letting him do that. Also, I find it kind of interesting that the first race in like forever that I'm actually competing up here towards the front 
Uh, okay, well, Denny Hamlin's not that far back. But uh, at least fighting for the direct win itself, it seems to be, interestingly enough, the one and two car. Uh, all we need is Kurt Busch to get in first place. And then Brad to be in second for that to actually make perfect sense. And then we need Austin Dillon to have probably the best Chicagoland race of his life to get up here in third place. And then uh, Kevin Harvick getting up here in fourth place. Wouldn't be too out of the realm of possibility. Fifth place, on the other hand, unfortunately, there's nobody going to the five. That meme kind of died basically as soon as William Byron entered the series because, I mean, they got rid of the five, which is also kind of interesting. At least at the time that I'm making this video, there's not been really any announcements regarding Hendrick for next year, but I'm hearing rumors that supposedly they're going to renumber uh, either the 48 or the 88 to the five. Honestly, I don't have any opinion regarding whether or not they should. I think the 48's fine. It doesn't really have any meaning at Hendrick outside of Jimmy Johnson itself. Kind of like the 24, but they wanted to keep the 24, I guess, for you know, sponsorship pur uh, purposes. So, I don't know. Nowadays, anything can happen in NASCAR. I don't think people really care too much about specific numbers. Outside of, I guess, it was really just the three. And even then, Austin Dillon's been driving the three for a while now. So, you know, people can use whatever numbers they want. I don't think there's anything that's really off limits. So, you know, just because somebody's won a bunch of championships or, you know, if unfortunately they passed away while driving in that number, I don't think you should really outrule it. Because unlike things like, you know, the NBA, there are you know 40 cars out on the track at any given moment most of the time so if you start outlawing certain numbers eventually you're gonna have to get into the triple digits which at least on you know a nascar style stock car i don't think is necessarily all that appealing but uh i mean i remember messing with those a lot back in the old days for uh, like nascar racing 2003 or uh like nascar 2005 chase for the cup also battling alongside brad for the lead okay so at this point i feel like our tires have kind of overtaken them because uh, we were pretty even with them right there at the start, honestly. And now that we have the more grip option, it seems like we have the uh, the upper hand. So if we run our way here, then uh, what I'll actually do next race, instead of just increasing a one, I'll increase it by two. Hopefully that's not too much and hopefully it's not too little. But it's looking right now that if it stays green, we should be good here. Also, I like how my rear bumper is uh, yellow just because Joey Logano kept sniffing it, for, you know, five laps in a row. I don't know what's wrong with that dude. All right, so it's been a few laps. We are ever so slowly starting to pull away from uh, Brad Keselowski and Kurt Busch. Uh, we're also starting to pull up on some lap traffic. So I do feel like I might have decreased the difficulty slightly too much. Uh, I do think, you know, it's probably maybe around like 102 or something. So uh, if that's the case, we are just going to, you know, de uh, increase it after this, like I said before. I'm completely fine with experimenting with it. If anything, you know, at least we had some fun. We should win this race, barring some imminent, like, meltdown or something. I think this is also Justin Haley up here running in a... It should be 30... Actually, 38th, I guess. There are, there's another car that just came down pit road. I wonder if they're out of the race. But uh, first time lapping somebody in, you know, quite some time. I will, I guess as the leader, I should say. We usually lap some back markers every once in a while. But yeah, uh, I hope you guys don't mind the fact that maybe this was a bit too easy of a win considering i mean we had two wins earlier this season where we were on max difficulty and then for some reason i don't know if it was from you know some change they made in a patch or something but at some point we just stopped really being all that competitive so the other thing i could do is i could get rid of the more grip option so that we actually have tire fall off as the uh you know run goes on because we were pretty similarly paced to the uh you know top few cars there at the start of the run and it's only after i guess their tires start to wore off that we really kind of pulled away but uh, do let me know down in the comments. Of course, you know, like I said before in previous videos, I may have already recorded a few extra by the time you see this. Uh, so, you know, be patient with me and hopefully uh, we get to try out these options at some point in the future. As uh, at this point, we're just kind of flying by some of these, you know, lapped cars. Well, soon to be lapped cars, I guess. Hall of Famer Quinn Hauf up here. We are going like 20 miles an hour faster than this guy. And hey, you know what? Maybe maybe we just had the best car. Maybe we try and write this into the lore of this like franchise. I, we didn't really do a whole lot with that, honestly. Uh, I would love to do something like that in the future. Uh, for any of you that have ever seen like some kind of My Driver series from a YouTuber named Erava, who does like Formula One content primarily. But I would love to do something similar to that regarding NASCAR. Or, I mean, you kind of have lore in the background, uh, and then you play the game, and like there's more to it than just actually racing, uh, where there's like an actual storyline and stuff. I would love to see something like that and actually try to implement that, but I don't feel like NASCAR Heat 5 necessarily is a game that, you know, really makes itself available in that kind of way. But we have three laps to go. 
We're now lapping our teammate. Oh gosh. Who at the start of the race we actually fell back from a little bit. So I don't really know what to think. The the takeoff speed of this thing on restarts and on starts in general, it just doesn't seem to be good no matter what. I think we can live with that. We'll just we're just gonna be a Chase Elliott and or Jeff Gordon. Uh so please don't give us any green white checkers on restarts. We'll probably find a way to throw that throw that away, unfortunately. I say that as somebody that's been a fan of both. So two laps to go. Should be quick and easy unless a caution comes out right at this moment, in which case we'd probably still be fine. Actually, maybe not, because I definitely wouldn't pit while other people might. And then at that point, when they have fresh tires and I have basically no tires left, they would probably beat me, especially on a short run like that. But uh, hopefully that doesn't happen as we're going to come to the white flag this time by. Alrighty, final lap. We are currently running uh, 30. That was a 31.3. We haven't really dropped off time. See, that seems to be the thing. Maybe instead of lowering the uh, or increasing the difficulty next race, we keep the difficulty at 100, but then we get rid of the more grip option. Because you can see here, we were pretty close at the start of this run. And now, you know, late in the run, I'm now almost eight seconds ahead of Brad. So I'm going to probably do that. I might also take up the difficulty just by like one, just to try and make sure it's not too easy. But uh, hey, it's been a long time. And uh, we're going to pick up our third win of the season. We did have to, you know, mess with some settings for that to happen. Uh, 101 speed rating. Hey, maybe that means you just put it at 101. That seems pretty suiting to me. Uh, let's go ahead. And see if I remember how to do a burnout. I'm pretty sure I don't really. Uh, I could just pretend that we, we can't do burnouts because this is Richard Petty Motorsports and we're struggling for money enough as is. I don't need to, you know, blow up any engine. I mean, hey, you know what? We we tried. I think we can go ahead and uh, cut the burnout here. And of course, looking at the full time uh, race results, we don't actually have to, you know, scroll up to the top at this point because we're actually on the front page for the first time in quite some time. Uh, Denny Hamlin finishes in seventh. Kyle Busch in ninth, so I mean, we're not going to pick up a ton of points, but I mean, for the first time in a long time, we do pick up some points, which, you know, that's worth a lot more than what's been happening. And then uh, moving on to the point standings, even after all that, we're still seventh in points. We are supposed to be here, I feel. It is fate. Uh, I mean, we didn't move up. Uh, points wise, I mean, we are closer, I guess, to the lead, obviously. That's how math works. But uh, we are still seventh in points. Ryan Blaney has now fallen down. He's only five points ahead of me. I'm only. Look at this, I'm actually only nine points ahead of third place in points. So third through seventh are very close. And then you have Denny Hamlin and Kyle Busch who have just kind of checked out. They're they're in Formula One. The rest of us are in Formula Two, if NASCAR were to be Formula One racing, but it's not. Uh, but yeah, I think, you know, hey, at the very least, we have a race for probably third in points at this point. And uh, let's go ahead and move on. But anyways, guys, that does wrap it up for this one. I hope you guys have enjoyed. I mean, hey, we won for the first time in a long time. So hopefully if you've made it this far, you do consider leaving a like. It would really help me out a lot. Also, just now noticing the next race is Daytona, where difficulty probably won't really make much of a difference. So unfortunately, we're going to have to wait another race after that to see if uh, really we're in the right bracket we want to be in. But yeah, I'll probably put it back up to 105, honestly, for uh, Daytona, just because we almost won the race at Talladega last time um, and really... If you're at a restrictor plate race, I think lowering it just makes it way too easy. But yeah, hope you guys have enjoyed. Have a good rest of your day, and I'll see you all in the next one.